In August of 2018, Jazza hit 3 million subscribers. He made an artwork comprised of 3 million dots to commemorate the milestone, and at the end of that video, he shouted out five up-and-coming YouTubers. Michelle, Jeanette Andromeda, Cantarona, Samuel, and myself. Hi, I am Nikki Clements. Now shouting out Michelle, Jeanette, Cantarona, Samuel, that made sense. They're all artists. But me, well, I am Nikki Clements. Something that became very clear when the five of us joined a group message and started talking about doing some kind of collab. Something the five of us could make and then give to Jazza as a gift, as a thank you. We settled on having the four of them make an artwork using random props from the Artie Games app, and then I would take their artworks and turn them into a physical thing, a shadow box clock. Well, that never happened. The clock part, my part. They all did their artworks, and quite promptly too. I just didn't. I tried, kinda, but as my dad says, trying is lying. I designed the clock and figured out how I wanted to make it, but I just never took the steps to actually finish it. Now, just because I didn't ever do it doesn't mean that I just forgot about it. Quite the opposite. I think about it daily. My brain loves my failures and it will remind me of them any chance it gets. And this project has given it unlimited ammo for almost three years. So it has to be finished one way or another. Well, three ways, actually. I could just make it, do it, get it done, and then share the results. But especially after all this time, I have to do a video on making it. But setting up the camera and the lights, that's one of the main reasons that every time I thought about doing it, I quickly gave up on the idea. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a GoPro on my head, and whatever it films is what you get to see. So I did some work. I have all of the artworks printed out on some uh, water slide decal paper. Um, and the idea is to basically put all these on wood. And I want to cut it out on the laser just because it'll be more precise than trying to do it on a scroll saw or something. And I think I'm going to cut it out first and then just put the decal on it after. Um, since this is a water slide decal, I'll be able to position it in place. So I think that'll be a better way to go. Okay, so I've actually decided I'm going to score a rough outline of where these need to go. And then I'm going to take the piece out, I'm going to put the water slide decal on, and then I'm going to put it back in and cut it out. Yeah, I think that'll be better, because if I cut it out and then try and put the decal on, um, trying to deal with the edges of, you know, the, the rough edges of the decal, I don't think that'll look as good. I think this is my best shot, so. And I've added a decent stroke so that if when it goes back in, it isn't perfectly aligned, it should still be okay. So while that's cutting, I'll uh, roughly cut all these things out. Did I, oh, what did I put that on there for? Did I have a plan for that? I think I just put it on there. Thank you. 
Now this stuff, water slide decal, is super cool. So you just soak it in water and then it will slide right off of its backing. And then yeah, getting the surface wet allows you to manipulate it a lot easier. So here next. So you see why I'm thinking this was probably the better way to go? Because otherwise I'd have to perfectly cut this out or put it on and then try and like razor off all of the flashing. And so this way I get it lined up as best I can. I've already applied a nice bleed to the artwork. So if it does cut a little bit out of the lines, it really won't look that bad because the background is already matching the color of the original design. So I think this is, this is the right way. Much better on that one. But yeah, I mean, see how awesome this this stuff is? I really need a new ramp. All right, so this is a very huge decal to be doing, so it could go wrong very quickly, but... Uh, I'm actually going to wet both sides, which should hopefully help prevent it from warping too much. All right. Okay, okay. Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> oh, this way, right? That looks flawless. So, I mean, that is like spot on. That's Cool. All right, here we go. We are putting a clock right here. And now you can buy clock kits for like, you know, 15, 20 dollars. Or you can just buy a whole clock for like four bucks and just take it apart. It's so much cheaper just to buy a whole clock. That's ridiculous. And it's literally the same thing. It's it's the it's the same mechanism. And it literally just pops right off. And you there there. You have a clock. Nice. 
Nice. Nice. These are pretty cool. Yeah, these came out real nice. Wow. Look at that. Interesting. Well, that's not good.
What? That's... I was supposed to cut that part out too. Crap. That was the whole point of doing it this way. And I'm pretty nervous that I'm not going to be able to get this off like it'll have, yeah, that's exactly what I kind of thought might happen. Damn it. Damn it. All of them? Oh, this sucks. Oh well. So these water slide decals are awesome. I mean, it's a super cool way to get an image transferred onto wood. I mean, the quality is incredible, but uh, there's a couple issues. One, 
they are pretty expensive, especially in the 11 by 17 size. And the only supplier for that size that I've been able to find is this World Paper Company. Um, you can find 8.5 by 11 all over Amazon, relatively decently priced. But the 11 by 17s are like seven, eight dollars a sheet. So uh, it's not cheap. And it can also be pretty hard to work with. Uh, for one, you saw that it wasn't sticking very well to the backer, it was just kind of peeling right off. Um, part of that is just because this board wasn't nearly smooth enough. It's definitely sticking a lot better to this nice smooth finished wood. Although of course it is still peeling off. I really wasn't worried about that, but uh, it's also pretty challenging to print, especially again in the 11 by 17 size. So these were my attempts at reprinting the background. And I mean, you're looking at like $14 here. Just, uh, just totally wasted. And uh, that hurts, that, uh, that's tough. So I think I'm just gonna forego putting the background as a transfer. I don't even think it really read that much. I mean, you could see the wood grain in some of the lighter areas, but overall it really didn't read that it was printed on wood. So I think I'm just going to give up on that idea. I don't feel like I'm wasting more sheets trying to figure out how to get it to print. So I just have it normally printed on paper. We're just gonna glue that to the backer board and move on. I'm gonna glue it on with wood glue. I'm uh, not exactly sure why. So this time around, I'm not using the cutout as a guide. I just have it printed right on the image. So that should work out a lot better. Nice. Nicely done. Perfect. Fantastic. You win. <sighs> Thank you.
I suddenly had a bad thought that maybe they would hit each other, but nope. Plenty of clearance. That's, that's cool. I think it's gonna hang the right way. Nifty. Well, what the heck is... Shit. Well, that's not gonna work. I should not have put these on yet. And perfect. Mm -hmm. 